Hi, and welcome to Happy Fisherman Adventures. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. And I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman. In today's video, we are not going to do lots of introductions about the clips, because pictures speak a thousand words. It is tuna galore at Bowen Heads, one of the fastest trips we had. And this time we got our friends Ovi and Seb with us. So it, let's not talk too much. Let's watch the first clip. Well, we can start with, I could not ask for better morning. Today's adventure is actually catching tuna or bound heads and with us we got our friends Sev and Ovi. As you can see, it was glassy out there. There was no wind, we knew that the swells are really low, like 0.8 of a meter, so everything worked perfect. For Sev, this is actually the first time that she's going to fish offshore and catching tuna, that's everybody's dream, I believe. So today we try to make her dream come true. Well, as usual, we start with Chiquita getting lots of cuddles. Then Mima brings some pastrizis out, which is actually hot from the oven, and we have some breakfast. And then after that, we're gonna try to concentrate and find some tuna. In our previous videos, we actually mentioned that we never navigate this river if it's low tide or if it's a high tide. We always navigate it kinda in between. That way you can fit under the bridge and plus the low tide is one that scares me because you can hit the bottom. And of course, damage your skeg or prop. Here yeah, you can see that the swells were very low so there was no bar or breakers, nothing. It was a piece of cake to go through today. Not even 10 minutes later, we got close to 60-70 meter line and we saw activities happening. Of course, we put the lures on and hope for the best. Then, as we were passing on the side of this patch, one of the lures took off. This fish hit the actual Halco Lumo color and it was our left short corner. That was a very good sign because so many times we come out and we can see all these activities, birds, fish jumping up, but they don't want to touch anything. You can get them, but you can't catch them. Well, today looks like we're onto patch that's feeding. Ovi was on his favorite tuna setup and he was in control. If you take a closer look, you can see that Ovi winds with left hand. So we set up two left hand side rods with the left hand wind and the two on the right were right hand wind. In no time we had this fish right out of the boat, we kept it and we had our first tuna. Oh, yeah. Wow! <laughs> the fish today was quite nice size and there was no time to waste. So we had to set up again and start trolling as soon as possible. We must spot it where the fish moved and there was just splashes everywhere, so we went around them again. For me the key factor when you chase tuna is to observe, to see birds in the air, or to see fish jumping, sometimes mutton birds just sitting there poking their heads in the water, even just shimmers on the water, that would sign that there is fish just underneath. Then, before you realize, we were on double. Well, it was time for Mima and Sev to show us some women power. And yes, Mima took one road, Sev took the other one, and they were in action. 
For Mima, it was easy. She's done it many times before. But for Sav, it was a different story. She was shaking. She never did this before. The fish was quite big, actually. And um, yeah, it was a bit of a fight. As you seen, we had a double hookup, so let's watch the video. While the girls had big fight on their hands, I was setting up the rest of the cameras. Oh, oh. Very <laughs> Doing all this in a rush, I didn't realize that the camera had fogged lenses. So unfortunately, the dash camera and the back camera, you guys gonna see a little bit foggy. The fish crossed around, so Mim and Sev had to change the spots, but we were still in control. Looking at those roads and the way fish behaved, I could see that Sav's fish was a little bit bigger. Sav's fish took the little bass trite lure, which is just like a four inch skirt, and Mima's one took the new hulk of white color with the kind of silver stripes. Then we had Mima's fish right at the boat, and I missed it with the gaff, so I'll may have to go to spec savers. Well, my second shot was actually alright, so we picked up the second tuna and now it was Sav's turn. Sav's fish was quite stubborn. She had it at the boat, then it took off again, then she had it at the boat again, then took off for the second time, and now we're fighting it again. The drag was quite on the edge, so I didn't want to tie it up anymore because pah, Sav would have a free trip to Tasmania. Sav did tell us that she can't swim, so guys, in this situation, doesn't matter the size of the boat or where you are, just make sure they got the jacket on full time. Here you can see that I had to give it a hand a bit because this fish was really stubborn. It was green. We had the two times at the boat and it was green, so it took off again. Then the fourth time we had it at the boat, I didn't want to take my chances anymore. I told Sav just to walk back a little bit so I can reach the fish and that was it. We had number three on the boat. <laughs> this fish, it wasn't a barrel, but what was so special about this fish, this was Sav's first tuna. Well, as you saw, we were only a few minutes in and we already had three fish on the boat and the fourth one was Tibi's turn. You're gonna see, I actually left the camera untouched, how long it took to get the four fish. I was dropping the lure and have a look how quick we got the number four. I thought you are gonna give up. I gave up for a few minutes. Oh my God, they bust in the water, look, look, look. So, they're everywhere, yeah. Here yeah, you can see I'm putting the rod down and now we're gonna see how long it took until we got the next fish. I'm not gonna cut this footage or swap angles so you can see exactly what's going on here in real time. Okay, 
As you can see here, it went crazy. So it was less than a minute and we had another fish on. We talked about this in our previous episode that when the fish goes, they go. There were storms that they were jumping. Um, you can see them sunbiking on top and we could not catch them. But today was one of those days that we had fish after fish. One thing that did surprise me, that even the car park at Bowen Heads was full. There was no boats around us. It was only us at the moment here. And um, yeah, we were catching fish after fish. I did make a decision when I left the ramp that I'm not gonna stop and troll blind, obviously. I'm gonna start trolling once I see the fish or some signs or anything on the sound that then we're gonna start trolling. In no time we had this fish out the boat and as you can see here, this fish sits on the side and it does circles. So just take your time and pick up the right moment before you gaff it. All right, here we go. It's not even one hour since we left the actual boat ramp and we already have four fish on board. All around us, the fish was busting everywhere, so it was no time to relax. We put one rod in the water, obviously trying to set up his rod because the first fish that he got took the Lumo lure and he swallowed actually, and we left it in his cob. So um, basically he's trying to put a new lure on. But before he even sets it up, here we go. <laughs> Considering that that was Mima's favorite setup, we got Mima on the road again. We have to think out what you can. Okay. Yes. Out of the way. It is very stupid. Out of the way. Out of the way. You just can't fish with the rod. For free. Just can't. In the next video, we're just going to continue with our adventure. Well, so far we had four out of four, so this was number five, so let's see what Mima's gonna do. This fish took again the new Halco, the white one with the silver stripes on it, and um, yeah, as you can see, Mima was holding on to it. Now, if you carefully watch what Ovi does, this is what they call a flying gaff. Tuna jumped out and he got her in the air. This is what we call 5 out of 5. Ovi could not believe what's happening. In such a short time, we had 5 fish on board. It was an amazing day out. Anyway, we made another move. And this time Ovi managed to set up his rod. But unfortunately, the fish was on the other side. Now we did get Ovi on the road and he struggled a little bit because, as I mentioned before, he winds with the left hand. Also saying that, this fish took quite a bit of line. It was on a skirt, again on the bust right small white, white bite skirt, and that skirt was about 30 meters out. And it took another 20 meters, so it had about 50 meters before the fish came to the boat. Just to make everything a little bit more interesting, this fish decided to make a few runs. And every time it done a run, it was 40-50 meters away. So, Ovi had a hard job on his hands. I can easily say that it took nearly 20 minutes before we had this fish ready to gaff. This was another good sized fish, so I grabbed the leader and what do you know, spec savers again, I missed it. And the second time it was game over. Got him and that was our number six. Well there you go, 
just over an hour and we had six fish, six out of six. It was an amazing day out. By this time we decided, you know what, we had enough, let's pack up and go back home. Funny enough, all the bigger fish took that smallest skirt, which is the bass right white bite, whatever they call it. It's just amazing how that works. Then we put our life jackets on, as you don't want to cross the bar with Adam because it can be an expensive trip. And we were on the way out. Amazing. We left about quarter to eight and we're already back by 10 o'clock. Well, this must be the shortest tuna trip ever. We had six out of six and by 10 o'clock we already were on our way out. Well, the hardest part was we had to clean all the fish. <laughs> so let's watch the next video as we unload the boat and um, we had some friends coming over and uh, we had some beautiful dinner as well. Enjoy. 9.45 and we are on the back out. It was still no swell, the seas were down, so crossing the bar back in was a piece of cake. As we got there, some of Sev's friends were on the pier. Chiquita was very happy. Short trip and tuna for lunch. While Sev, well, to her, it's all just a dream. For Ovi, this trip was way too short. Here, a closer look of the two lures that actually worked a treat today. The Halco and the Bastride. Once we got home, quickly rinsed the roads and it was time to unload the fish. We were all curious how heavy are the big fish. So Ovi stood on the skull and he weighed 98 and a half kilo. Then we got the fish of the boat and Ovi actually hauled the fish and stood on the skull again. Funny enough, the big fish that we thought that's gonna be easy over 30 kilo, you won't guess. It was only 24 kilos. Sometimes the look and the size, the length, the fatness on this fish can be deceiving, but they're not that heavy as it looks like. But who's complaining? Nobody. Look at the sashimi on this fish. Amazing, pink ass, and Chiquita absolutely loves it. She's one of our crew, so she gets the first go at this beautiful fish. It's amazing how much she loves the actual fish that scored on that day. A few days later, she won't eat it. For us, we love to eat sashimi the day we catch it and the day after, but already third, fourth day, that's just tuna steaks for us. Saying that, Mima's family, my friends, our friends at work, my neighbors, they all had fresh tuna for lunch. Also, to top up this adventure, we had a special treatment we got sashimi prepared by our friend Kara Kamens, who's actually a magnificent chef. And also some of you guys remember Kara from actually talking fishing show. We end up having a quiet evening, sitting back, relaxing, eating fresh sashimi. And yeah, Kara and Dean had the kids around, the kids were playing with Chiquita, so everybody was happy. We were sharing some memories from our previous adventures and um, yeah, we were talking about boats, um, also kids had to do some homework. My favorite subject, let's learn some facts about the sea. The question is, where is the fish? Everywhere. There's Kalmari just started from Clifton Springs, all around Port Arlington, around Indented Heads. Young Aston sent us a picture with Kalamari and King George Whiting. Good session he had at St. Leonard's. Mm -hmm. There's people on the other side, Lara and all around Lara and uh, Point Wilson, catching again Kalamari. There is pinkies around Altona side and some King George Whiting in Altona in shallows. Western Port, they're smashing gummies. One after the other, there's so many gummies coming out of Western Port, it's crazy. And between them, good snapper. They're catching good snapper as well. Tuna, 
everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Bow on heads, turn left, turn right, find a feeding patch. The, that's, the, I think, the key. There is days where you can see them, they jump and you can't catch them. Sometimes you just have to leave them alone and move them, try and find another patch. Um, we were lucky, as you see in today's video, but Portland, Lanigina, Lanigina, and Bermagui, Marlon in Bermagui, but watch the weather because, yeah, if you don't have good enough boat, it can be iffy. Our boys, Jake, actually from Geelong Marine World and with his dad and Dave and um, Reno from Mali's Marine, when they got some beautiful, obviously it was a tag and release competition, beautiful fish, mm. but the seas were high. Again, thanks everyone for your support, people that purchased our t-shirt, people that donated on our website, we really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you next time. I hope, I dream, I wish to catch a big fish and I do it when I can. I'm a happy fisherman And I do it when I can I'm a happy fisherman